Eli Schwartz here from the Everything Saxophone Podcast. We're at the NAMM Show 2024, and all of the podcast episodes from this NAMM Show are being sponsored by Rovner Products. It's their 50th anniversary year. I'm so excited. We've, it took us a little while to get this work in here, but we've had Sherelle Cassidy on the podcast before. This is the first time we're meeting face to face. Okay, so this is so awesome for me. Welcome to NAM. Welcome to the podcast again. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me again. I love your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So appreciated. So, you just got in, getting over the jet lag, all that kind of thing. What kind of uh, what kind of things do you have in store at NAM? I know I missed one thing, unfortunately, already. Well, the reason I came was to play for the Van Doren and Danzer um, 20th year anniversary for their collaboration. And so that was really exciting. I got to play last night with great saxophonists Jerry Vivino and Mark Gross, who I've played with in the Dizzy Band for almost 20 years now. Wow. Yeah, and uh, so it was just really great to play and uh, to see everyone and to have such a great you know, turnout for an event like that. Yeah, I got to say, the NAMM show this year, it's back in January where it normally used to be. It's really crowded. Like the last two years because of the pandemic, it wasn't so much, but even Thursday, it was jam-packed. Today, it was jam-packed. Last night, I'm sure it was jam-packed in the Hilton, right? You it was, it was yeah. shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, everyone's excited. There's a lot of music going on. You know, it's great. It, it, it absolutely is great. A lot of deals going on with, with all of your favorite products, for sure. So you had that performance. Anything coming up today on the floor for you? No, today I'm walking around and you know, talking to people, talking to Donna Schwartz, and <laughs> doing the thing. I'm catching a train to LA in a couple hours. Ah, okay. So I'm glad that we, we got a chance to catch up with you. So talk to us a little bit about what's been going on for you in 2023. In 2023, already, <laughs> uh, I've been to St. Louis and Iowa and just all over um, Indiana, you know, and I'm teaching at DePaul. So it's really already been a great year and um, I'm booked you know for the next few months really teaching at DePaul in the week and on the weekends playing either a festival with my group or uh, doing artist residencies at different colleges yeah I've seen that yeah and I love working with the students I love going there meeting the directors and seeing you know the similarities and differences of each program seeing what's working what's not working and talking to the students and seeing where they're at I've seen I've seen all of her posts on Facebook, and I definitely see like you know the enjoyment that you're having working with students. What? Okay, have you noticed any, or what trends have you noticed with students? You know, as of late, you've been teaching for a while too, right? What trends have you noticed in the last like couple of years when it comes to jazz education? Right. Well, now we have this kind of machine of jazz education in a lot of schools, and there's really only a handful of schools that from what I see are teaching jazz from the original, you know, uh, philosophy of the oral tradition and learning from the masters and, and that type of thing. Uh, especially with COVID, uh, I saw with the students, they weren't accustomed anymore to communicating, to working together, to oh, have, wow. you know, forming community. And that's now starting to roll a little faster. That ball is starting to roll. But we did see a, a big difference after COVID. That's really interesting. Actually, I didn't even think about that too. And you know, I guess being isolated and stuff, yes, you could play with backing tracks, but that's not the same as playing with people. Mm -hmm. You can play by yourself in your room. Yeah. But we're musicians and we're supposed to have affect on people. If I wanted to play for myself, I could just play for myself in my room all the time, yeah. right? But I want to affect people. We are supposed to have reach. So uh, getting that point across is, really essential right now. Are you finding with the, the younger students, um, is it difficult to have them listen to the masters or do you have to you know, approach it from a different perspective? No, actually if they're under 12, it's pretty easy. That's cool. Because they don't know what they can't do. And wow. yeah, and um, you just tell them, check this out and I'll help you and you know, teach them how to find the note on their instrument. And from there, they kind of, they take off, but I don't, at that age, I use whatever inspires them. Like right now I have a 10 year old playing Angry Birds. And <laughs> we transcribed it together and then we're playing it in three keys and. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. You know? we, we have someone playing Angry Birds on the trumpet. No, he's not, but I'm just saying, <laughs> it sounds angry. It sounds angry. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much tonguing right there. <laughs> 
it was perfect. It was a, like right. a perfect even. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, well, yeah, no, that's true. I mean, anything that can inspire them to play their instrument and to practice, um, I think is great, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. So when it comes to like improvisation and stuff, when you're working with the students, was it, whether it's as an artist in residence or that kind of thing, what are some like tips that you normally share with the kids to help them to feel more confident, you know, mm. to raise their hand to take a solo? Oh yeah. Well, one of the first things I stress to beyond what you were just asking is getting off the page, you know, seeing the music in different terms other than just notes and rests, imagining a story behind the music, having it give you even visuals or an emotional response. The music is not on the paper, it's in the air. And then as far as solos go, you know, that's tricky because while I want them to have confidence, it's like asking someone to get up and speak in a different language. And if they don't know that language, of course they're gonna be timid. So we work on maybe one note solos if they're absolute beginners. Like, how many ways can you solo using one note or two notes, you know, and what is the blues and what notes make the blues uh, and, and that sort of thing. And I find that once they have just a couple of tools to, to solo, um, a lot of them get up and, you know, then they're filled with confidence and they get up. And I saw a trumpet player last week take her first solo and then on a the concert, she just kind of stands and, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> it was great. I love to see that. Yeah. And what's really great too, um, I know you're actively involved with, you know, women in jazz and all that kind of thing. It's so great to see that from the kids at a young age. I think so. Um, like I tell people, I didn't set out to be a woman in jazz. I set out to be a jazz musician. But in this day and age, there's a need for women in jazz. And, um, and ones that have a lot of integrity and that have worked hard on their craft. And, and, you know, and uh, when the kids see that, I think it puts something in their mind. Not just the girls, but also the boys. It's very important, important for boys to also see what successful women look like. Yeah, because they'll be working with them on the bandstand. Yeah, that's the idea. And, yeah. and we want a mutual respect. And I think if the boys also have great women as teachers, you know, then, then they can't say anything when, when things, you know, turn into, um, I don't, I don't want to say women bashing, but you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you for sure. Exclusion. And that's, no, that's a great point too, because there, we're seeing a lot more women rising, you know, amongst the, the downbeat polls and all that kind of thing, right? You know, yourself, Sherelle, um, uh, Lakeisha Benjamin, um, Alexandra, um, Ale Alexa Tarantino, yeah, <laughs> all this stuff, this noise is crazy, but all these great players, right? But now, seeing women teaching too, I think that actually, that's a great step, that's a great next step, because, you know, it, it's, it's been inherent that you're going to just learn from a, you know, from a man. Mm -hmm. And I didn't come up saying I want to be a teacher, but I slowly learned that all my favorite artists and mentors were some of the best teachers. And then I started learning how few women professional musicians were in the educational system, especially at a university level. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's something that needs, needs some work, you know. We'll get there. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah you know, I, I do what I can by just being the best that I could be and being a positive example and trying to help people along. No, for sure. Absolutely. And I have to ask, you know, who were your most influential mentors? Hmm. Uh, there's there's quite a few of them, but I would say Jimmy Heath, James Moody, Vincent Herring, um, Steve Wilson, and uh, you know even people on different instruments. I got a lot from just being on stage with Roy Hargrove so much. Oh yeah, Roy, you know, Roy yeah. And off stage, you know, he would give me tidbits here here and there, little little gems of information that I would carry with me, and you know so. There's, there's a lot of people in my wheelhouse that I consider my musical family, my musical elders, and um, I, I think that's something that we need to keep continuing for this music to, to keep growing. And it is growing in very interesting ways because, um, you know, when I go like on solo sax gigs and all that kind of thing, I was just saying this to somebody before, most people, they're not interested in, in jazz, but jazz, encompasses so much you know it, it really does it's not just me playing a standard all of me <laughs> you know no. it's not all of me anymore it's all of you no it's sorry but you know it's it's it can be anything else I was telling someone this morning that 
often people will come to my shows and they've never heard jazz and they don't even know what they're listening to, but they like it. They fall in love with it. You know, and I think that if you ask someone, do you like jazz? They're going to say, oh, I don't know. You know, cause, because of Netflix, you know, and the media, and it's always background music. It's always above people's heads. We're sort of led to believe that in society. Yeah. But when they actually hear the music and they experience it, they say, oh, wow, this is what it is. And that's really exciting. And that's a great point, too, because unfortunately, we, we've been a lot of times relegated to background music and restaurants and that kind of thing, but that's not everything that it is. No. It's not. That's actually everything it shouldn't be. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. It, it, it is right. crazy when you think about it. Um, yeah, so I, I think jazz needs better PR. <laughs> it does. Yes, it definitely does. But um, I have, speaking of um, strong women, I have an all-female jazz quartet album coming out in March. Awesome. Co-led with drummer Colleen Clark. It's called Alliance. Awesome. So Great name. For that. Thanks. That's really and, cool. And the idea of it is that it's not always going to be only women. It's going to consist of guests that support women. So it's, you know, women and people who support women jazz musicians. So it's, we're, we're kind of exposing our community. That's fantastic. So it's coming out in March. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be touring? We're working on that now. Awesome. I know it's hard because you're teaching, and that's that's the one thing, too. You've got to take that into account with your schedule. But I'm sure you're going to be doing a lot during the, the late um, late May, early June, then the summer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we're recording our next one in June. So we're going to do some, some touring, some releases, and then go right back in the studio. Wow. All right. That's quick. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully you'll be coming around here in the L.A. area. I would love to. I, I need to get back here more often. Except, uh, well, I was going to say, it's, it, there's so much traffic here. <laughs> it definitely takes the traffic. The traffic is real. <laughs> it's, definitely, it's beyond real. Yeah. It's beyond jazz. It's beyond real, the traffic here. And the traffic getting to Nam is just beyond. Mm -hmm. But, no, it, it would be great to have you, uh, you know, around here for sure. So you've got an awesome 2024 lined up. Yes, already. It's, it's taken off. And I'm, I'm so happy. You know, it's it's a lot of work, but it's everything I've worked for. So, you know, yeah, I'm and, happy about that. And I see that, and like I said, I see that in our Facebook posts as well. You know, I see that. You know, you're you're just so happy. You're you're, you know, with with the teaching, with the playing, everything. You seem like you're you're at peace. I am. I'm in a good place where I can create. I can compose. I can practice. I can teach and pass what I know to the next generation. Um, and. You know, I can have a family, I can have my Jazz Up summer camp, you know, my nonprofit. Yes, that's right. Hold and, on. Oh, I just got the, I just got the, the sticker yes, right Yes, yes. Jazz Up. There we go. Can you <laughs> talk it. about that? Yeah, I have, the program's called Jazz Up, technically the Jazz Up Institute. That's the website, jazzupinstitute.com. And it's focused around um, high school students and early college students learning how to improvise, learning how to communicate through music how to be verbal about what they need musically. And they're learning from some of the, the greatest musicians in the Chicago and New York areas. Um, and we, we bring musicians from New York, we bring musicians from downtown Chicago to work with all of these students who otherwise don't have access to jazz musicians that are world class, um, working professionally, and can help them learn how to improvise uh, and, and have, you know, learn more about business and, and really make a career path. That's, this is incredible. Thank this you. Is, no, I'm serious. This is great because, you know, again, it's, it's, you're doing what the jazz masters have always done, right? Being a mentor. Huh. Think about it. That's well, what you're doing. If we want this music to move forward, we have to help the next generation yeah. and, and let them know what it's about. And, uh, you know, I came up with this idea because I had 40 students when I first moved to Chicago and um, I was just teaching a lot of private students. So many of them were hard workers. A lot of them made all state. Allstate Jazz, um, ILMEA Jazz, you know, and they were doing well, but you know, when you play in a big band as a horn player, you're playing a part, yeah. you might take a short solo if you're lucky, but you're, you're really just playing a part, and, and that's, there's a community in big band that I think is awesome, right? but if you want a career in music, and if you want to be a great soloist and really know what the music is about, really know how to communicate through the language, uh, that's a, that's a whole nother skill. And on top of that, knowing, you know, having direct access to the inside of 
different music programs or how to pick a music program oh yeah or do you need to go to a music program yeah yeah you know, and um, you know what the industry is requiring and everything down to how you should think about doing your taxes or approach a record label or oh, that's right you know just all of these things that even in my experience having gone to school you don't necessarily even learn in school I was just about to say that yeah I um, unless you know like some colleges like Berkeley maybe even USC uh, Thornton um, a couple of schools may be addressing it but there's still that real world element that no one really talks about and you know it's like they build your skill level up but then what do you do with it right yeah go to school learn how to play and then and then what <laughs> and, then, and then waitress right because <laughs> you know it's not just about playing right there's a lot of other things involved and you know it took me a long time to figure that out too because I just kept shedding and shedding and shedding and shedding and okay okay you know but there's there's a whole nother side to it to to actually make a living and be successful so uh, I want to give that to my students early I want to pass that on to the next generation help them be the best that they can be introduce them to people that can lead them on to greater things yeah. you know and um, so that's what the program is really about. That's fantastic. That's so great. So once again, <laughs> here we go. Jazz up. Jazz it up, right? Jazz <laughs> Just up. Jazz up. Jazz up mm -hmm. com. Jazz up Institute com. Jazz up Institute com. Yeah. Definitely check that out. We'll put the link in the show notes for sure. Well, listen, Sherelle, I know that you're busy <laughs> and, you know, you took the time to see us today. It's so great to finally meet you live. I know. I'm thrilled. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks so much.